Hello and welcome to this very special Franchise Hockey Manager stream. My name is Adam. I'm the Community Manager of Franchise Hockey. With me as always and not pictured on your screen is FH10 producer Jeff. Say hi, Jeff. Hey, everybody. And we are here to talk about the upcoming Franchise Hockey Manager 11. Right now on your screen, you can see that the start screen of Franchise Hockey Manager 11. And before we get kicked off too far into things, we're going to run our trailer right now as a world premiere, I guess the best way to say it, Jeff. Yep, uh, that's pretty much accurate. So without uh, going, uh, now we'll save everything for the end. For after that, let me just go straight into the trailer. You can have a look at that. And then after we get through that, I'll go through some screenshots and we'll discuss some of the new features and then uh, take some questions at the end. So uh, sit back, here we go. <laughs> Turning it up to 11 with Franchise Hockey Manager 11, officially licensed by the NHL. Welcome to Franchise Hockey Manager 11, new this season. Gain international fame. You can now create international tournaments to add to your custom game that will adapt to your custom league or win the NHL's new Four Nations Face-Off Tournament. Satisfy your owner. Your owner's voice is now louder than ever. Owner goals will now force you to take actions to satiate their needs and save your job. Continue to bring history to life. Minor League Hockey is now playable in historical games going back as far as 1940. Keep track of your players. Watch closely as your players develop in our new tracking system. Updated for the 2024-2025 season for every NHL club as well as international, minor, college, and junior leagues. Trading AI, roster management, and player generation have all been overhauled for a more realistic experience and so much more. Welcome to Franchise Hockey Manager 11, all on the only NHL licensed PC game. And there we have it. That's uh, the what is upcoming in the game. Uh, we will. We, you'll probably notice in there we didn't mention a uh, release date yet. That we do have one. We know it's. Uh, we don't. We want to release, and it's very soon. But there's a little nonsense going on with Steam at the moment. I'll explain that a bit more uh, after we go through these slides. But uh, theoretically, we want to release next Friday, the twenty fifth. Uh, there's some nonsense going on with Steam's approvals where they're holding it up for a really stupid bureaucratic reason and the fact that their whole approval process seems incredibly slow at the moment. So theoretically, that could, if it gets pushed back, it's going to be 100% on Steam. I really hope it isn't. We really want to get it out next Friday. It is going to be ready to go next Friday. So just a matter of whether or not uh, we get that last little hurdle cleared before we can give it to you. But Adam, uh, I think we can go on to the uh, slideshow and start discussing some of the individual features and then at the, after we get through this uh, we'll take some questions at the end yeah absolutely so uh thanks for tuning in already you see we have a nice crowd um we have been working hard on this for quite some time and just so jeff we're ready to talk about you know some of the big changes you know what what's what's some of the big new features coming in fhm 11 for people who are waiting well i think one of the ones that will have uh gotten people's attention at the start is whoops hang on there we go uh sorry uh powerpoint is being annoying when it's uh cooperating with the streaming software okay one of the the things we've uh, we mentioned near the start of that uh trailer is we now have custom playing world championships and i know there's i think when we did the uh, release a couple of years ago somebody got very excited that uh, they thought that we had added to the international tournaments to custom play 
And if I felt really bad about it, I would say, no, we didn't actually do that. It's, I think we had added uh, World Juniors or something that we'd done something with International, but it wasn't, or maybe it was something we added International to Historical and it wasn't in custom yet. But now, no, this really is International tournaments in uh, custom play. So you can, uh, you'll, you can, you can, when you create your custom leagues, no matter how you've got them set up, you will have the option of having international hockey in the, in them. It's a say it's a setup option right at the start. If you don't want the tournaments, you can still leave that off. Doesn't make a difference. Uh, if you do turn it on, you get uh, it's three different yeah three different tournament types. Uh, the Olympics every four years, the World Championships every year, and if you've got and if you if you have the teams or the player pool to support it, you also get a second level of the World Championships. So the uh, way that works, uh, obviously, in, in it's a bit of a challenge to add international play to custom games because every custom game can be vastly different depending on how you guys set it up. Uh, I mean, if, some, if you want to set up a league that in Tahiti that has only Tahitian players, uh, that's probably not going to work too well with international play. But if you, you know, add international leagues on top, if you add leagues in other countries on top of that, uh, and you've still got your Tahitian league at the top of it your world the uh, international tournaments that show up in the game will have tahiti as a playable team which is kind of awesome in itself yeah so uh, however you want to however weirdly you want to set it up uh, you can uh, do that and the game should respond to it that's it's it's flexible it uh, will occasionally if you you know if you've got a setup that's sort of on the fringe of being able to do create enough uh, internet that uh, we're having enough international players that it can uh, create tournaments uh, some years it might some years it might not it'll just ignore the tournament it, it won't play the tournaments if it winds up shorter players like say you've only got uh, players for enough for uh, two teams it uh, in a particular year it won't play the Olympics that year just because there will be a shortage of uh, international teams uh, and you'll get a note to that effect and then if you somehow uh, add more, add a couple more leagues to that and bring in more players so you've got enough for four national teams, I think it's I think four was the minimum, uh, then you will have a, an Olympic tournament after that. So it's it's very flexible. It'll respond to whatever do you're doing in your game. And uh, the tournament itself will be played at the end of the season. Although, uh, well, the World Championship tournaments are. I think the Olympics, uh, it goes in slots into the all-star break like it normally would uh, in a standard game but the tournaments will be played at the end of the season so they don't overlap with your playoffs in uh, your own custom leagues which is important yeah you don't want your players leaving mid mid playoffs yeah that would be annoying it as well occasionally happens in real life but uh, it shouldn't happen in, in uh, the custom games and i think that uh, covers it pretty much for uh, the custom international stuff if somebody's got questions about yes. that, we can ask, we can get them later. Yeah. Uh, you know, the next big thing on that and going through the trailer was uh, the Four Nations Cup now is uh, in NHL coming up and it's in the game. Yeah. The NHL this year will be, instead of having an all star game, we'll be playing a tournament uh, with four teams. Uh, each team plays three games US, Canada, Finland, and Sweden. Uh, right now, it's unclear as to whether or not this is going to be an ongoing thing. What we've done in the game is every four years, it'll replace the All-Star game in the NHL. So you get this four-team four, uh, four tournament, uh, which I think, I mean, I, I like I like the format better relative to what the All-Star game has turned into because, you know, these will be actual hockey games and not whatever the All-Star game is now. And it's, it'll, you know, it uh, changes things up a little, so it'll be uh, entertaining to see and uh, get a little bit of international hockey in the middle of the season. So that is in the game now. Yeah. Uh, is it going to happen just the one year, or is it going to be a continuing thing if you're yeah, well, playing? Yeah, like year? every, it'll, it's set right now to repeat uh, every four seasons. So you'll go, you'll get it in the first year, then you should get three years of all-star games, and then back to the four nations face off and the way it's the way the timing works uh well, actually you won't get three years of all-star games because there'll be an Olymp and, Olymp and olympic interruption one of those years but the with the uh, spacing of the tournament it'll never overlap with the olympics so we can do both of them 
And I think that's about it for the Four Nations Cup. Or Four Nations right. Face Off, rather. <laughs> All right. One thing we have heard feedback on and uh, is coming in FHM 11 is owner goals. And so, Jeff, how are owner goals affecting the game experience? How is it going to change you being the manager? Uh, if you're your familiar with Out of the Park Baseball, you have uh, you know their uh, owner goal system. You'll... Your owner will, at various times in the season, uh, tell you that he wants you to do a specific thing. Uh, acquire a particular player, improve uh, a position, uh, find, you know, sign a player that uh, has been an all-star, et cetera, et cetera. And there's, there's a whole variety of different uh, tasks you can get assigned. And we've done something, uh, it's not exactly the same as OTP system, but it's, uh, you know, the th generally, thematically, it's, it's pretty similar. And in this case, you can see that this is a custom team that... Uh, the owner has said uh, that by the end of the by the end of next season, they want you to address what they think is a weakness and goal. And yeah, uh, yes, if uh, I know that's misspelled uh, priority instead of priority, that's fixed already. These screenshots you're seeing here are uh, about a month or so old, so there's been a lot of fixes going into these already. So that's that's been fixed already. Uh, so it's. Basically, it's it's similar to the to the point uh, OTP was at when it when the owner goals were first introduced. Uh, there's I can't remember off there. You know, there's there's quite a few different types of goals. Some of them are specific to certain leagues. Uh, if you're you know playing it in the minor leagues or in Europe, uh, you'll get uh, you can get a different set of goals than you get when you're playing in say the NHL. Uh, you can see in, in, in this one, for example, here you're playing with it being played as the Rockies and I think this is 78 or so 77 77 78 uh, what the owner wants you to do is uh, find a player who is we're born in Colorado he wants to add a local guy to the lineup which is going to be pretty rare in this time period so good luck finding that you can probably <laughs> dig somebody out of the uh, minors and that'll make him happy and he also wants you to get a first round uh, draft pick in the next draft and you see the uh, target date is a little wonky on that uh it should be to showing that uh i think the day it's uh, that is supposed to be assigned is uh, the day after the following draft so i think that's been fixed already but i'll double check on that but he wants you to get a draft pick there so you get you complete these goals or fail to complete them and it'll affect your job security uh, you, if you do a good job of uh doing what he tells you to do and uh, you should keep in mind that some owners are going to be a lot more interventionist now than others. If you're playing the late 70s Leafs and you've got Harold Ballard, uh, he's going to be a lot pushier with what he wants you to do. And if you, on the other hand, if you don't meet those goals, that is going to send your job security downhill. And I should just throw in here that we uh, went back to the uh, job security system. And uh, there was a, an, actually, it was a design that was six or seven years old that we had shelved for a while because we didn't uh, weren't sure we wanted it in the game but we went back and added that in so it's uh, job security is takes a lot more factors into account now also uses some uh, newer systems that have, been, that have been added to the game since the CD job security system was originally designed uh, it should feel a, a little more responsive to what's going on and uh, it turns out the uh, job security uh, tracker on the uh, uh, or on the security screen uh, was the one that's in red here on uh, this screen. It wasn't necessarily accurate as to whether or not you were going to be about to be fired. So we fixed that issue and added that old slash new design in. And it, if you're in, if it's showing red in this situation, it really means you're in trouble now. So take it seriously, and you probably want to be meeting those owner goals to. Uh, get out of that situation well you don't want to keep make your owner upset at any point anyways no. it's not a good way to keep or to keep your job no and that's right. about it for owner goals i think yeah so uh one mm -hmm. thing we saw people get really happy in the chat already uh was talking about the tracking system so well, what's going on with the new tracking system jeff yeah i, I apologize for the screenshot here i kind of did this in a bit of a rush a few weeks ago and it, it, it's not really, it's obviously not showing uh, the full length of the tracking system. And there's a couple of different views here that uh, I don't think you can necessarily tell from this. 
screenshot you can this is a, a longer term one where you see that it's tracking everything that's happened with the player while he's been your property uh since uh well he's 19 he's 20 it's about five years of in-game tracking now and uh what his ratings have done there's a shorter term one as well uh that lets you look what what's happened over the last uh couple of years just so you can see what the general trend is like the uh Game. Yeah, remember what the, our, the, our stream games lately we both wound up with somewhat old teams although adam's overall his and it's a very young one now and you can get an idea of just how badly your players are going downhill when they get old is you see those uh, lines decline so right now it's it's limited to the uh uh players that you that uh, you own the rights to or have i think it's actually under contract right now but i think uh, we're going to be changing that to own the rights to just because it would be there's a hundred thousand plus players in the game it would get incredibly intense storage wise and really slow things down if we tracked every single player but it, it does track your players which are obviously the ones that uh, you're interested in yeah which is important and I, again yeah some points in the chat saying you know this will be big for prospect development so you can see how those yeah prospects yeah, absolutely. are going up or if you've got uh, a problem and uh you see that they're not going up, you can uh, try to figure out why that is and uh, fix it in your training, presumably, or with your coaches. Or we'll trade them away. <laughs> Some people actually have patience, Adam. I don't know anything about that, Jeff. No, no you definitely All right. don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else on tracking, or should no, we No, I think on? we can uh, move on. All right. Next thing up, then, is the historical game. Uh, if you watch the trailer, you would know if for the first time ever, you can go all the way back to 1940 in the minor leagues. Now, to be sp specific on this, the American Hockey League is playable. Yep. That's... Jeff, yeah, it's been a bit of a pet project for you. So what's been going into this to make it happen? Basically, that's this is the AHL from 1940 forward. That's uh, 83 years of hockey and they'll, you can pick up a any team in any of those years is going to be playable. Uh, started in 1940. Technically the AHL, the league was around for, I think it's four years prior to that as the Can-Am League. And I wanted to start with that, but uh, as I started looking into it, the sources I had were a little sketchy on the details I needed for those four years. So I started, decided just to be safe and make it a 1940 start. I think I will go back uh, when I have time and uh, properly, if I can dig out all the details for that and get those uh, four, or four or five extra seasons added in, so you can start as the Can Am League in the 30s, and it'll take uh, take the beginning yeah. back a, a little earlier. The NHL uh, was not a straight line for development. I I think it's safe to say the AHL was not exactly a straight line either for. It's it's, it's and... actually been remarkably consistent uh, since you know pretty much the 1940s. It's had. The only the major difference between uh, now and what's happened at various points is there have occasionally been other triple A level uh, minor leagues, and I'll say more about that in a second. But uh, the uh, AHL has generally been a top level minor league for pretty much its whole run, which made it the logical one to start with, and obviously it's the the biggest and the current one. So it would have been weird to start with uh, anything else. Uh, you can see this. Uh, this, I think this is the 1980s Rochester Americans uh, Sabres farm team. And the, the way this uh, it'll work in the game is the, the affiliations will change every season, assuming you haven't done anything weird to your league setup uh, in, in the uh, in turned historical edi editing on and made changes to the NHL. But assuming the NHL stays the same, the affiliations will change on the exact dates that they uh, changed in real life or exact seasons. If you had, if teams had a shared affiliate uh, one year, uh, that'll happen. Uh, like uh, Edmund the Canucks had a shared affiliate in Fredericton with Quebec in the mid eighties for a little while. Uh, did well, you guys ever had I a shared one? Do shared one with, with uh, Dallas and Winnipeg when, or with the Manto Moose for right, a right, year right. or two. Yeah, and well, speaking of the moose, there's them in, uh, I think that's 2018. Uh, but and they, there will also be uh, times where there, be, where there will be independent teams 
in the AHL. There aren't any right now, obviously, in real life. Uh, they it's been a while since there's since there has been one, but particularly in the no, early last, years. Last year there was one, Jeff. Oh yeah, the yeah the Wolves, Chicago Wolves. Well, they were <laughs> sort of. I mean, they were, they still had uh, they were getting Carolina players, so it wasn't totally. They got the odd Carolina player, not much. Yeah, we had it set up in game to use Carry for so Carolina used them as the affiliate. Uh, but yes. uh, there will be genuinely independent teams that stay that way for multiple years, so you can play as those teams and you sign whoever you want or at least whoever's available uh, that the NHL doesn't want and try to compete with the uh, teams that are getting NHL guys sent down to them. Yeah, I think one of the most uh, crazy things, I mean, you could literally lose your entire team one year if it, if you, if you flip on a team that flips affiliates. You yeah, lose yeah. most of your players. Yeah, if, well, if, it flip, you know, if it changes affiliates and you're suddenly independent, you're going to have that, a lot of players to sign. <laughs> Uh, but going back to speaking about the Moose, uh, the Moose are not, were not originally an AHL team. Do you remember uh, what they started as? Well, they started as the Minnesota Moose in the IHL. The IHL. And the IHL is, no, the IHL is not in the game yet. But the nice thing about this is the, the hard work, the heavy lifting of adding minor league hockey to historical play is done now. Well, done subject to, you know, whatever... Uh, fine tuning and bug fixing that we wind up having to do with it but the basics are there now so it's just a uh, data side thing at this point so i'm going to be working on those i'm hoping to get uh one more league probably the old central league added in an update sometime to this season uh if assuming i can it doesn't unexpectedly take too much time to do that but it works you know the mechanics will be basically the same as the uh AHL, so it's just uh, moving some data around, doing the research, and getting players to fill in. No, I, I didn't uh, touch on the players. Every player who has ever played in the AHL has been added to the database if they weren't in there already. So that's added several thousand guys, so there are enough players in there now to fill out the teams in addition to all so the ones that already existed. What you're saying is you're fairly busy doing some research over the past little bit. Yeah, it's it's all in there, and uh, so if I, can, I would like to get the Central League in next, and so that'll be, I think they were the 60s through the uh, 84 they went belly up. Well, the, if correct me if I'm wrong there, they were kind of the big affiliate for the WHA. Uh, yes and no. The WHA used some North American League teams as well. They weren't... Well, right, yes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but you, know, same, you know, several yeah, teams uh, had... You know, the Canucks had their Western League or had their primary affiliate in Dallas of the Central League for a few years. So it was a full scale three uh, AAA league. Uh, so just a question from the chat, and I know we said we're going to leave, but it says yeah. Security Shark asks, wow, so literally any player in NHL history could come up in a random debut draft, for example? Yep. And that's it, all part of the random debut system now when you select that option. So then the international guys. Uh, it's a big old mess. <laughs> you can yeah, it's, there's yeah. a, a lot it, of players have been added to the database. And, the, and, and since we've added the, a lot of those low-end guys, it'll probably add a little bit of variability to when you're starting a random game uh, to the quality. It might be significantly higher or lower than it was before since those uh, minor league guys will get mixed in. So they're all in, and then hopefully get the Central League in this year. Uh, then International League... The I is going to be a little bit uh, more complicated because they were sort of a you know, double A ECHL level league for a lot of their history until the Central League uh, died off. And then they sort of stepped up to become the competitor to the AHL. And there was even that period in from the light, it was about mid 90s till when the league ultimately uh, died in the early 2000s, yeah. where they were. Probably, you know, it was a better league than the AHL. It wasn't quite a full-on WHA. Yeah. yeah. Where they were signing uh, for some pretty good players, high draft picks, and bringing in guys who were you know, too young for the NHL at that point. So it's an entertaining league to add, but I think if I do add it, it's only going to be from about uh, the early 90s on or whatever cutoff point I use to well, say you know, when you it was a full-scale top uh, top level minor league just because it, it we can't really change the quality the, the quality level of the league in mid game like that maybe someday but for now it'll just be those last few years of it and then once that's so in good no i was gonna say what you're saying is you really just want to play as the orlando solar bears 
Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, but, we can, uh, I, could, I could do that in ECHL now, but it's it's not the solar <laughs> bears that I used to go to. <laughs> uh, the all right, just. Just one more question on this, uh, because I think it's important. Uh, New York Mike asks, is this, or will real AHL schedules be added eventually? At the moment, yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, we're using uh, generic ones at the moment, and the league uh, format, the, the playoff formats are simplified right now. It would have added a ton of coding time that we, we'd already spent quite a bit of time on this, uh, getting uh, just getting the game, just getting it functional in the game. And so we had to cut a couple of corners and make generic schedules and uh, uh, sort of simplified playoffs. So that'll be in right now. And But yeah, I want to eventually get the uh, proper schedules in for whatever seasons I can do them. I don't so I'm sorry it's going to be a little... ahead in some questions, but I think they're yeah, yeah, no, that's important okay. ones to discuss while we're doing this. And I think uh, that covered. I think we can sort of go on to the general stuff now. Or did we have anything yeah, else? I think that... I think that's kind of the main stuff. So, I mean, it's a new game, Jeff. It's FHM 11. What else is is new in FHM 11? The Utah Hockey Club is new. Yeah. yeah. It's still a tragedy. They didn't call them the Utah Yetis. Although I think we're all hopeful they'll fix that after the first season once they can get our proper jersey designed. But, yeah, the uh, they're in, they are in now. Uh, Arizona, obviously, uh, out of the league. And as always, the... Uh, database has been updated for 24-25 for every single league uh the and you know players are updated i'll, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in a second because there's some fairly important news on that front that was touched on a little bit in the trailer but uh that is updated and that's you know concept is that's pretty much what i spent the uh, bulk of my well last night and morning doing is doing database work and getting it uh tuned up for the uh, final release. Uh, I'm just going to, as, as, as we're going through these, I'm going to show you, flip through and show you some of the new screens here. Uh, this one is, uh, there's uh, a couple of new report screens that will give you, evaluate what's happened in the drafts in your games and give you the, you know, biggest, biggest draft bust, biggest sleepers in the draft. So in this one, in this case, you can see it's uh, showing guys who've uh, significantly outperformed their draft position, Jamie Bin, Ben Jarslan, Yaroslav Halak, and uh, that type of guy. Uh, and it'll also show you which undrafted players have done particularly well. Uh, but getting back to what we were saying, what I was saying a second ago about the uh, quality level of players in the league, I think we got a lot of comments last year about how there seemed to be uh, a lot of variation between the first couple of years in the league, the drafts, and then the quality rapidly drops off for a while and suddenly jumps back up after a few seasons. Uh, what we've been putting a lot of time into this year is getting that process much more smooth. smooth. Uh, the, I mean, basically the, the source of the issue really is, well, aside from the way the player, player generation is set up, uh, it's we've been doing this uh, database uh, for 11 plus years now actually just to, first time it's happened i put a kid into the database this morning that was born after the first version of the database was created oh man yeah makes you feel old <laughs> uh the uh but uh over that time you gradually accumulate uh mistakes and uh you, you make changes and you don't you know it sort of atrophies after a while and doesn't get looked at and it's you know it's always a relatively small team that works on it uh, just because that's a little easier to do quality control that way but regardless uh, you're still going to get stuff creeping into it and what we wound up with was a lot of bloat particularly in the last that would have probably started a couple of years ago and extended a couple of years from now into the future where there were too many nhl quality guys in the database. So you tended, if you played the game in a few years, you tended to notice a lot of teams winding up with rosters that really didn't have anybody below three stars in a lot of cases. And, you know, like uh, one of the same things we noticed in our, you know, the year of Penguin stream this year was always signing these guys coming out of uh, undrafted players coming out of junior and then being able to make the team. So I've, we, what we put, did this year is put us with some time into our internal tools and letting me look at those and figure out where the problems were and then 
take uh, big steps to uh, rather than having to go through and edit things individually, which had been the way since way I had to do things pretty much since the beginning. Uh, gave me some big batch tools so I could uh, target specific places in the database that needed to be say players needed their potentials lowered in a particular range. And the end result of all of that is uh, as of, I still have a couple of things to add, but as of this morning, I've got a nice even flow of players, uh, basically from, well, just the time frame I've been looking at is 1999 birth year through uh, 2011, which is the last birth year that, uh, where, that will be before players start to get replaced by game generated players. because first game generated players appear in July 2025 and uh, those are 13 year olds so they're 2012s so what we need in the database is uh, you know a relatively consistent uh, level of potentials from year to year and now we've finally got that minus a couple of things I have to do with 2009 and 2010 but it, it'll be done in the next uh, couple of days and so you should notice in your games now you don't get these weird talent spikes up and down and we've also uh, been doing some work Sebastian and I've been uh, in the last week or so uh, adjusting the player generation and doing some tracking on that so it should match up with what's in the database now so you should get a very smooth overall experience you won't see these weird uh, you know sudden gluts of talent that then uh, go uh, dry up for a few years and uh, you know, eventually resolve itself, but only if you play quite a few years into the game. So that should be a thing of the past now, and I think people will be a lot happier with that. And the the drafts will look a lot more consistent. And I was another thing I was able to do was uh, I did some poking around in our with the uh, Elite Prospects API. Or we we still have our deal with them that lets us poke around in their database and pull things out of it. And I was able to uh, do some things that uh, they have. Uh, there's a few things that you. I don't think you can necessarily see them on the site, but just the ways they've, they've got particular prospects marked. So that let me, uh, for example, uh, come up with a fairly decent picture of who the uh, 2011 uh, born uh, likely NHL draftees are, which is, I mean, that's these are 13 year old kids right now. <laughs> but uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how well the, you know, in, was it five years from now? the NHL draft is compared to uh, what it looks like in the game versus what it winds up being like, being in being like in real life in 2028. So hopefully that's uh, worked out. But I mean, the players, you know, the prospects, the, the top end guys will look like they, uh, it'll be a typical draft pool instead of being that uh, it, the 20, the, it, that was always the worst year in the player pool is the one right before the fictional guys, the, newly generated yeah. players every year start to take over. That was always a big hole and that, that is fixed now. So you won't get it, get that anymore. Let's see what other screens we have here. This is, uh, oh, that's just the, uh, I'm just talking about the draft. That's the uh, 20, uh, 24 draft, uh, Celebrini at the, at the top, obviously. Uh, and he'll be in the league. Well, he'll have his, Oh, he didn't get injured. He got he got injured in the opener, right? He, so he didn't. So that won't be yep. any outstart injuries. Uh, the uh, a couple other things that we've done this year uh, and mentioned in that uh, in the trailer it was the overhaul for trading AI, and it's 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 one of those it's it's tough to make a decision to do something like that because it's a lot of internal work, and uh, it doesn't necessarily it's not a big obvious new feature to show off. But we really overhauled the way the AI uh, decides when and how to make trades, added a bunch of new trade types, and made a few other improvements. And also, uh, a lot of that stuff extended into the transfer system in Europe. So it, you should see a very different trading activity this year. You should see a lot more of trades happening at appropriate times. Uh, people, teams trying to pick up... Uh, loaner players at the trading deadline for example guy on a, you know with an expiring contract that was always in the game but it just wasn't the trading system wasn't very efficient at pushing the teams to make that kind of trade at the right time so we're you know and we're it's you know we're still testing that uh, still working on a few things and but i think it's you're gonna it's gonna be very noticeable that the trading overall trading picture in in say the nhl is going to look more realistic than it did in uh, previous versions uh, what else we got? Oh, this is a you know, new thing in the scouting screen. It's 
you know, again, this is an out, out of the park like uh, change. Uh, the radar chart, there's a separate one for the goalies. Uh, just fixed a bug with that this morning. Uh, but there's your standard scouting report and the uh, radar chart shows up uh, on that now and you can get a little bit of a, it sort of gives you a glance at what type of uh, player it is just by looking at the uh, graph there. Uh, one of the other things I should mention while we're talking about roster management changes, uh, the we've improved the way the teams uh, deal with the period between the playoffs and the and, and the new season on July 1st. Uh, they're a little smarter now about how they understand that roster spots will be opening up as free agents or if you're in a junior college league, uh, graduating players leave. And it will take advantage of those uh, roster spots if they need to re-sign players. Uh, one of the, it's a, it was sort of a long-standing problem where a team might not uh, try to bring in, might not be able to sign its prospects because it was say at 50 contracts already, uh, even though they knew the, it, or at least it should know that say five or 10 of those guys were gonna be gone as of July 1st. So it, it gets around that little, that little roadblock now. So that's been improved. Uh, what was the, oh, another thing uh, we did is uh, if, if a team has to send a good player down on waivers, usually for uh, cap hit, cap management reasons, if they're really hard pressed and have to wind up having to send good quality players down rather than risk losing the player for nothing it'll first attempt to trade the player away usually for a draft pick and at least get some return for him rather than risk just losing him to waivers so the ai has gotten a little smarter in that regard yeah. and okay when well, this is uh, you can see the uh, schedule screen has changed a little bit uh lists the captains beforehand and it's uh Visually, it's a, it's a, the layout is slightly different now. Uh, some other new stuff we've had that uh, individual coaches have specific tactical preferences now. And oh, <laughs> I just noticed on the uh, screen, I guess the, not sure it's what it's getting where, they, I think that's right at the beginning of the season. It's showing uh, all teams as being completely winless. Well, <laughs> yeah, I never no, noticed that before. But uh, yeah, that's uh, a bit of fiction. You actually see that in the next screenshot. Uh, but uh, yeah, ignore that for the moment. Uh, but individual coaches have their have specific tactics they like to use, and they'll be they'll get a, a bit of a bonus for implementing those tactics, and you'll see them using them a lot. Uh, like uh, Guy Boucher had that uh, crazy forecheck system where he would, well, he wouldn't forecheck basically. He, he no one three one. Not even a one three one. It was like a zero three two. Wouldn't send anybody yeah. in, and you'd line them up at center ice. So obviously that's associated with him now. So he'll you'll see him using that in the game. Uh, what else have we done? Oh, the another thing we added was uh, it's a fairly rare thing, but if you're playing in the junior leagues, uh, you'll get exceptional player status. Uh, if you're playing the WHL, OHL, QMJHL, if you get a real superstar Connor Bedard level player, or uh, well, the, the only one, the one this year is Landon Dupont in Regina. Uh, they will get exceptional status and they'll be able to play in the league a year early, ignore the 16-year-old uh, uh, general uh, age limit for the league, and they'll be able to play the full season as a 15-year-old. We've done that. We've been able to get that in a couple of times before, but I was basically just doing that by cheating the system one way or another instead of properly implementing it. Now it's properly handled and you will see new players. If a superstar comes along, there's a chance he'll get to play in, the, in your junior league early. So you should see yeah, some of that. It's and, only happened like six times, something like that. It's no, a relatively new very... thing too, though. Uh, yeah. Well, it's only been two in the dub now and two or three in the OHL. Yeah. And has a Q had one? I'm not sure. They have one? I think they had one. I can't remember. Uh, you see, the, and this here you go. You see, that's fixed now. This is the post screen, the uh, schedule, screen, schedule screen after a day of games have been played. So... It gives you a lot more information now. It tells you who the stars are and so on. And uh, actually lists the performances of the day. So three of those. So that's a, that's a, one of the new, you know, sort of a little Chrome hey. window dressing type stuff. Uh, the, we also added, uh, you saw some of the new report screens, uh, the draft bus one. Uh, there's another one that shows you league demographics. Uh, like average weight on a team, biggest and taller than biggest and smallest players and so on, age, 
average age of teams. Uh, there's one more coming that we haven't been able to squeeze in yet. I don't know if it's going to make it into the release or otherwise it'll probably be an early update. It's a Hall of Fame monitor. So that'll be uh, either in or coming fairly soon. Uh, that covers the, that's the new reports. Uh, there's also a couple of new uh, news stories you'll get. Uh, this has been asked for quite a bit over the years. Uh, every playoff series will generate a playoff preview in the news and just give you a little idea of how the series safe shapes up, what how the teams played against each other in the regular season, and just let you know that there is going to be there's about to be a series uh, with those games. So it's sort of the other the complement to the uh, championship uh, screen that props up that we added uh, a couple of versions ago. Uh, there's also a midseason news report that will. Uh, do will give you a preview of the uh, potential award winners at the end of the season. Uh, basically, it'll, the way it does that, it just unofficially hands out the awards based on the real awards criteria, but it lets you know who you can see quickly uh, which players are having a very good season, if there's been any surprises or whatnot, and if the, you know, if the awards are being selected right now, it'll give you a list of which guys would be winning which ones. And as always, that's specific to league, depending on what... Uh, awards the league has. And I think uh, that runs out the end of my screenshots. Yes, it does. So I will flip you back to well, Jeff, that screen. And I think we probably have a few questions now. Well, no, we got one more thing I want to talk about. Okay, what do you one want to talk more about? major thing we need to talk about. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I told you to remind Save. me about this because I knew I was going to forget it. Uh, Saves have changed. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, we have had. You may have noticed in the forum uh, a lot of people reporting their save games getting corrupted. The culprit almost always is Windows OneDrive because it's point. It, it it wants to wants you to back up your or use entirely. It wants you to back up your documents folder to the cloud or just use the cloud as your documents fill it folder directly, which is a horrible, horrible idea. And I hate that Microsoft did that, but I can't change it. And it, the problem is all that syncing with the game with as many small files as uh, FHM, stuff inevitably gets corrupted and winds up breaking your save. And we can sometimes fix it and sometimes not, but it's very frustrating when it happens to you, obviously. So what we've done is finally move that save folder out of the documents folder it's in uh, it's in your I can't remember the exact uh, file path now, but it's in your users folder. It's in one that Microsoft is not directing to the cloud anymore. So it'll be a lot less likely if you've had problems with your games getting corrupted before. Shouldn't happen now. And as always, there is the option still that we added uh, last year to install to a completely custom folder, which is what I do with mine because I've got a faster uh, SSD uh, that isn't my default uh, install location. So I put it's I put the, the game on there and it data. runs a lot smoother. Yeah, that's so you can, you can still do that, but by default everybody is out of the documents folder now, and hopefully that will uh, really slow down the amount of uh, reports we're getting of corrupted and broken save games from that stupid OneDrive thing. I hate that so much. <laughs> uh, so one we thing we should we should mention before going to the questions: the issue with the release date. The planned release date was next Friday. Uh, October 25th we'd still we still want to release on that date we will be ready to release on that date unfortunately uh, Valve for some reason their the whole approvals process has been very bizarre this year uh, when we got when we put on our store page to you, you the, the way that it works is you submit there's two separate approvals processes one for the build of your game so they check it to make sure it functions correctly and you're not doing some you know, putting some evil malware up for sale on uh, Steam. So they, they check all of that. And there's also a separate approval process for the store page so where presumably they check what you've done and make sure it's complete and you're not doing anything, you know, corrupt or illegal on their platform, which is perfectly understandable. Problem is they made some, an odd little change to their uh, requirements for images on your store, on the store page. And the short version of it is you're sort of limited to only showing you know, any graphics you show on that page. Can't really show much other, you know, obviously other than, you know, in-game action screenshots. It can't show much other than your logo. 
so that's fine. That's mostly what we've done. Anyhow, uh, the only thing we had slightly different when our initial submission was we had an, an extra NHL logo on a couple of the screens. So obviously we're a licensed game. We want to advertise that. Uh, they refused to approve those screens because we had the extra image, extra NHL logo on them. So, you know, within you know, 30 minutes of me getting that uh, notification that they hadn't, that we'd failed the first approval process, specifically because of those images, I just pulled them all out and uh, made new images without that, uh, without the NHL, the extra NHL shield and resubmitted. And I figured, okay, well, we're fine. Well, you know, everything is fixed now. Uh, surprise, surprise. No, it wasn't fine. Uh, we got another uh, response back uh, about six days ago and the approval process is supposed to take like three to five days for each type. It is running considerably longer than that now for some reason. Don't ask me why. Uh, but they rejected us again the second time saying, uh, if you look at our logo on the screen right now, you see obviously we've got the NHL shield in the middle of the puck. And they, for, so, and for some reason, they don't like that there. It's, they say it's some sort of extraneous overlay image, which no, it's part of our damn logo. That's uh, <laughs> the NHL literally wants it there. They want it. It's, it has to be part of the logo. So I made that case rather forcefully to them, pointed out that uh, even, you know, NBA uh, 2K25, I think it is. That's not the version they're on, 25? I think Sounds so. Sounds right. Their logo does the same thing with the NBA uh, logo as, as part of the game logo. So, and they apparently got approved with no problem. So I don't know why Valve is hassling us over this, but they rejected us again. So I made that point back to them rather forcefully. That was six days ago. Haven't heard Jack since then. Yeah, so regardless, we're working on it. Yeah, we're working we've, on it. we've got some additional channels we can go through. We've got uh, through Out of the Park as a, a contact at Steam uh, then who's been helpful in the past at resolving this sort of thing. And we're, we've gotten in touch with him. Haven't heard back yet, unfortunately. Or, well, Marcus had gotten in touch with him. I, we haven't heard from Marcus if, there, if there's been any developments yet. Uh, the queue there, I can see both uh, approval queues are still sitting frozen at the moment, waiting for we're working final on approval. So, and they're, they're both, I think, past due the, the three to five day limit, even from the uh, last time we talked to them. So the, the one little hitch, though, is technically you're not supposed to be releasing a game within, you, it has to be no earlier than two weeks before when your Steam store page goes up because they want to do things like accumulate uh, wish list uh, ads from people. Uh, we, you know, it's the 16th now and we want to release on the 25th and the store isn't up yet. So I'm... Not sure if that's going to be a problem for us. They could potentially say, you know, if they approve us through the store tomorrow, they may say, well, no, you still can't put the game uh, on. You can't actually offer the game for two more weeks. I'm going to be very irritated if they do that. And I will, again, argue with them very vociferously if they uh, try to do that to us. I really hope they don't because I really want to get the game out on the 25th because it will be ready at that point. But there is an off chance, and this is why we've, we, you know, the original version of the trailer had the date, the 25th date, very prominently in that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to put that in there right now in any official context, because there is the chance it could get pushed back. And I will update you guys as soon as I've got any kind of information on when this is coming. And I mean, you'll you will see as soon as the the second we get that store approval, that Steam store is going to be we going live. And yeah. We are we are hopeful it's going to release next week. Yeah. But again, as I said, there yeah. could be that little hitch that Steam seems to be, for some reason, getting really anal about its technicalities. And I hope that isn't another case of it. But as of right now, these, the activations page says the internal one I can look at in Steam still says the 25th. And I haven't said no to that yet. So we shall see. But hopefully all of this, I know that you guys... This is completely relevant to the game, like the actual game experience, but this is the fun stuff that gets to go, that goes on behind the scenes in game development. So this is our life for the uh, last month or so going through this garbage. So hopefully we get that resolved soon. So now though, let's get on to the questions, Adam. What are we... Uh... Well, I, I would just put the unexpected things we can't control. We do the best that we can. And this is not something we've foreseen because as Smelly Wrestling Geek says, all the previous versions had the NHL logo. So not sure why 
this one is causing an issue. Yeah. Such uh, as it is. All else fails, I drive down to Seattle and throw rocks through the valve head border <laughs> windows. You get to talk to Gabe then. Yeah, I'm sure he'll yeah. be perfectly willing to talk to me. Of course. Yeah. All right. So with that, we have, you know, let's say roughly 10 minutes here to take some questions in the chat. All right. I'm sure we've had some already. So, I haven't, just because of the way the... Yes. Yeah. I had the so slides running, gonna... I couldn't see chat. So what do we got? Yeah. So uh, just go on. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, G, G his Mercer says, I play uh, QMJHL. I want to know about the authentic fighting rule. Is that coming into the game? Uh, I was hoping to get that in this year, and not yet. Uh, I think that is something that has a good chance of going in as an update, though. Uh, I wanted to overhaul the penalty rules but in and add historical penalties as well and league-specific penalties. That was on the list. Uh, didn't make it far enough to get put in yet, but it's still fairly high up there. So chance of it going in as an update. If not, I would really like to get that in for 12. It's It came close to being an 11, just uh, didn't, it just ran out of time. Uh, to get it in round and get it in now yeah so we'll uh, still have the uh sort of the workaround we had last year where it's players will uh get suspended a little easier for fighting in the queue yeah ratcast asks when playing as the american league uh is there any chance you can control who goes up and down and when i'm assuming this is more for historical knowing right yeah uh sort of uh, you can't uh obviously if you're controlling an ahl team you can't be telling an nhl team uh who to be sending down to you because you know, you're uh, playing as the Oilers. Yeah, send me Gretzky, please. Uh, but you yeah. will have control over the players they send to you if you if they, you know, it's it's been a problem in uh, the standard games for a while where team the AI will occasionally send you a group of players that you can't really form a lineup out of or too many that's exceeds your league rules. Uh, what you can, but you do have control over the a over those players whether or not you send them down to it's it's the reserve list in the historical game. Uh, you can shuffle them off of your roster just to uh, basically, you know, store them uh, so you don't get, you don't violate your uh, roster rules and you can bring in your own players if you want. So, yeah, you do have uh, control of, you know, who goes on your, who come, who shows up on your roster. Just not, you can't specifically demand they send particular players down. Yeah, a couple, couple people have asked the question, so I'm just going to... Uh, um summarize a little bit said was there any changes to the ncaa experience uh i think that's pretty much the same as it was uh last year uh the, yeah we added the you know canadian colleges we added last year uh one thing I, i've been wanting to add the uh mid-season tournaments like the bean potty and uh, that's turned out to be a little more complicated than anticipated so that's on hold for the moment uh no major changes though uh, second thing, again, taking a few different ones, uh, we didn't talk too much about the 2D engine. What changes have been done on that? Uh, we've been making some changes there. One of the things that uh, we've added, uh, made a fairly major change to the uh, way passes are implemented. Uh, right now, you, you'll notice in the game, it's it, everything tends to be a tape-to-tape pass unless it's, you know, unless it gets intercepted or uh, the... Uh, uh, by the passing target uh, loses control of the puck it always it always tends to go directly to the player i i worked out a way of uh it does where the it will use area passes a little bit more so you know flip the puck into an empty spot on the ice uh, so a teammate can move forward into that so it'll start doing that the other thing we did was uh sort of expand on the stuff we've done in the last couple of seasons with the the set plays uh we realized uh, late last year that the while well, we had added that stuff in, uh, the teams tended to uh, abandon the play way too early. So we took some steps to uh, address that, and they will stick with the play a little bit longer now. It should be particularly evident on stuff like uh, breakouts and uh, power plays. But it'll be it'll be a little more obvious that they're using their play. They're using uh, the design plays instead of. Uh, you know, starting out in that and immediately breaking off into something else. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say, I think, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong here, but 2D Engine is something that's continually getting worked on and changed. And Yeah, I don't know if anybody's noticed, if you've seen the NHL website in the last little while, they've got a little uh, 
goals highlight, uh, like sort of a, a 2D highlight for all of her, for goals that are scored in games and the box scores now. So you, you click the button and you get a little 2D replay that looks, you know, sort of like R2 engine, R2D engine of how the goal was scored and where the players were standing on the ice. So that looks nice and smooth. And we may try to adapt uh, some things from that that's, you know, kind of longer term, but get ours looking a little bit more than like that, more like that, although it, they look kind of similar to begin with. Yeah. And just little things. Um, <laughs> Overkill ASC, I'm guessing because uh, of what happened last night, uh, that would be October 15th, uh, says, can goalies shoot on net? Uh, yeah, technically they can. It's just super, super rare. As it there's, should be. There's actually a special uh, ability, a special attribute for players that some guys like Ron Hextall can get where they will try for the shot a lot more often. Yeah. Uh, just a couple questions. Again, just summarizing them from a few different people. You talked about trading. Is trading draft picks, trying to get into, say, the top 10, going to be easier, harder? Uh, you'll, it'll be more common, if I can put it that way. It's uh, the, I mean, it's, it's, it's deliberately hard because it was way too easy to rip off the AI that way to get to high draft picks. You're still going to have to pay quite a bit for them. Uh, you may see the AI offering them a little more often, and you also see the AI going after them more too, and particularly in the period right before the draft. We've added uh, sort of a little logical area in those few days between the start of the season or the start of the you know the annual changeover in July 1st in the draft where teams will uh, try to get draft picks or try to trade specifically for draft picks. So you'll see more draft pick movement there. It's still going to be tough to get the, uh, you know, super high lottery picks though. Yeah, and that makes sense. Uh, just another question in with that from NY Exit. Uh, says, is there a dynamic trade deadline, I'm guessing, for if you're changing the schedule? Is it going to be fixed? Uh, I think it's still fixed for the moment. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, definitely is fixed because there's uh, there were issues with uh, making it flexible. I think we looked at that at one point. So yeah, it's it's staying fixed for now. Uh, I should probably make that editable. Editable on July first would make sense, wouldn't it? I'll see if we can do that. Chazio TV just asks, uh, will we see more trade packages instead of one for ones or one for? Uh, I think some of the stuff we did indirectly will lead to that happening a little more option, often. We one of, the, one of the things I'm sort of in the process of doing right now as we tune the trading system is uh, sort of loosening up the requirements to make the trade work. We found out that uh, we did some tracking and found out a lot of the trades attempts were failing really early because I had made the outline of the trade type uh, which is how the AI does its trades. It's It looks to make a specific type of trade. I had made the initial one too restrictive. And that was failing a lot of, because of that. That's That was probably leading to a lot of deals that would become bigger multiplayer deals with the AI, never getting the chance to really happen. So I think once we get that kink worked out, uh, you'll start seeing a lot more of those. Um. Bosco coming in, uh, just, I think you might have touched on this, but I'll just point out, will there be relegation for custom world championships? Uh, no, the, uh, that's the, the problem with doing that in custom international play is because it's, the custom leagues, you, you never quite know which international, which national teams are going to have enough players for the next season. So we have to keep, uh, keep that fixed. Uh, the way it works now is the every season the game evaluates exactly how many players from each nationality it has available and if the if the team can fill the can field a proper lineup for international play and if it can it then looks at what the that the talent pool of each nation and sends the uh basically the the top half of the nations go into the top pool and the lower half go into the second pool so actually so the winner from one season of the uh, division, well, that's the 1A championship technically, uh, doesn't necessarily go up to the full uh, uh, champion, the, the full world championships the next season. Might take a look at doing that a different way, but there's the, the, the challenge will be if uh, you know a team gets promoted and then 
as retirements or something and it suddenly runs out of players that's that can mess a few things up so have some issues to work out before we can do that yeah um with that uh just a couple couple last ones a salary arbitration something that you could see getting added uh, yeah i've wanted to do that for a while uh just hasn't made it to the top of the list uh i think i started on design for that and didn't quite finish it uh but yeah, that's that's something I'd like to see going in because that's uh, you know a fairly prominent part of the uh, NHL uh, uh, contract system. And now that just talking about that, wasn't there something we changed with? Oh, uh, no, no, I don't think of the. the it's not directly related to that. Just that, that just reminded me of it. Uh, the contract AI changed slightly for players who are uh, signing a long term contract in the NHL for. You know, the really high end contracts uh, that are ending and ending with the player as a UFA, uh, they'll be they'll tend to be a little longer now. They I think they were capped at about six years before. I think you will see more of those super long term eight year deals that uh, we've been getting in real life. So that'll happen now. Okay. Um, with uh, okay, any changes to CSV exports? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know there were a few. There are things on the bug list that uh, got fixed. I, I, I can't remember that. Sorry, it's it's little technical stuff. Yeah, uh, that there just, was there. There are some bug lists. The one I remember specifically is, it was uh, for some reason it was throwing carriage return characters into some fields occasionally. I think we added something in there to get rid of that. So yeah, to fix I think, that problem uh, and well, you know with. Oh, the, uh, I don't think I, I can't remember if I mentioned this or not. We added uh, goalie starts to the uh, the track, the, the stats that get tracked for uh, players historically. So you'll see how many starts a goalie made in a particular season. I think we have to adjust the CSV for that. And there's probably a few other things. But uh, yeah, the CSV is it's something that's fairly straightforward to do. So that's something that probably tends to get added in updates just in response to whatever uh, you guys are using those. Uh, want us to do and ask for if we get a common request we can usually uh, accommodate it okay here's probably the last one and just because it's a good one uh is there any changes to the tweak and captaincy logic so say again to the what is there any tweaks to the for who gets picked as captain of your team oh yeah that's uh we did uh, make uh oh no that's okay sorry i was i was actually i was thinking about the the Mark Messier leadership award. Uh, we made it. That was that was related to the captaincy. It wasn't waiting the captaincies enough for those because it tends to be a captain, or at least an assistant that wins that. So we made a little change to the criteria for that that weighs them a little heavily, more heavily now. Uh, one thing we did do, I think we made a minor tweak to that last year, and the thing we did this year is uh, for some reason it was picking uh, long-term injured players as captains. So we had to we fixed that. It it doesn't do that anymore. All right. Uh, one last one here. Okay, actually, uh, just because uh, Rivendell 4 asked, how much will the game be when it does officially launch? Oh, price-wise? Yes. Uh, I, we were, uh, that, Okay, you caught me on that one because uh, this is Sebastian and I were supposed to talk about that last week and didn't get, or, get around okay. to it. We were talking... Well, we can hold on that. Yeah, it's as of right now in the internally in the the store page it's still 39.99 we were talking about a small price increase because god knows the price of everything else has gone up over the last 11 years so uh we we may do that it won't be it it definitely won't be as big as the uh what otp went up by 10 bucks last year didn't i so yes i think the 49 it won't be that high it'll be some yeah. it's a much smaller fraction of that if there is one at all so we'll make a decision on that very shortly with that, I think we're kind of at an end here, Jeff. I think uh, maybe we're at a point where this would be a good spot to call it. Maybe we should run the trailer one more time and then do a wrap up. Or do uh, I do a wrap up and then run? No, let's just do the tra do the uh, wrap. Uh, I may have an issue getting the trailer to run again. <laughs> actually, okay, well, let's, uh, actually, hang on. Let me let me just press the button. If we may get a trailer when I do this, we may not.
we're turning it up to 11 with franchise hockey manager 11 officially licensed by the nhl welcome to franchise hockey manager 11 new this season gain international fame you can now create international tournaments to add to your custom game that will adapt to your custom leagues or win the NHL's new Four Nations Face-Off Tournament. Satisfy your owner. Your owner's voice is now louder than ever. Owner goals will now force you to take actions to satiate their needs and save your job. Continue to bring history to life. Minor League Hockey is now playable in historical games going back as far as 1940. track of your players. Watch closely as your players develop in our new tracking system. Updated for the 2024-2025 season for every NHL club as well as international, minor, college, and junior leagues. Trading AI, roster management, and player generation have all been overhauled for a more realistic experience. And so much more. Welcome to Franchise Hockey Manager 11. All on the only NHL licensed PC game. What do you know, it worked. Okay, so there's a trailer and uh, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, what we'll do next uh, Wednesday is I think stream some of the actual game and just so you show you some of the new features uh in action uh probably won't be it won't really be a normal uh, stream where we're playing a coherent game I, i'll probably make two or the, make a few different saves to show off different stuff but you can get a little bit better look at the nuts and bolts so if you got questions uh, you can come back next wednesday too and uh, we can go into a little depth on them a little more depth on, into any particular areas that you're interested about uh and uh other than that uh God and gave Newell Willing will be able to release on the 25th. So keep your fingers crossed and I will let you know. And Adam will uh, send out via social media as soon as we get some sort of news on what's going on with the uh, bureaucratic holdup on getting us, getting our store activated on Steam. Yes, I will just add, we will have this archived and up on our YouTube channel as soon as we can. The trailer is now live on our Facebook page, on our Twitter page, as well as on our YouTube channel. So make sure you watch it wherever you can. Yep. Well, thanks everybody for coming out and we will see you a week from now. And I, I think I will be opening the FHM 11 forums or FH, separate FHM 11 forum on our official forums uh, in the next hour or so. So keep an eye out for that if you've got questions for the game and we'll post the, uh, uh, description, the description of 11 and the trailer and whatnot there as well. Uh, thank you and we will see you next week.